Hey, I'm Anthony Romano, and I'm gonna explain to you in this video a new fat loss concept you probably haven't heard of. Okay, so for this video, I actually went to some extreme measures, and I picked up a blood glucose monitor, okay? So this thing on my arm. Uh, I've done this for multiple reasons, because I have clients who are constantly measuring blood sugar for various reasons, uh, for health reasons, not because you need to do that for keto or anything or fasting, but this is simply a luxury choice that I've gotten uh, to learn more about my body and also just for fun because I'm weird. So <laughs> uh, this is partly uh, some of the evidence I'll be using in this video, but it's just to explain one principle. And the principle is flipping your insulin on and off is very powerful for fat burn. Okay, so keep in mind, basic rules of YouTube apply here. Okay, this is an educational video. This is not meant for you to, you know, take everything with a grain of salt and just go and try it on your own because everybody's different and some people can mess themselves up. So, you know, consult the doctor and other basic YouTube liability protections, whatever that everybody says, <laughs> okay? So, I'm gonna explain in this video how this works along with some other side notes from my own personal experience. foundational premise of this video is when your insulin is lower and you start doing activity, you are going to burn more body fat. Okay, that's the foundational principle. The next premise after that is presupposing that you are somebody with good insulin control and blood sugar control. Okay, because this does not work for everybody if you're somebody who has, you know, insulin resistance and then you start working out in a low blood sugar state, you are going to have problems. Okay, so this is again, those are the two foundational premises here. So the main thing is for people who, once you've assessed your own situation for the help of a medical professional, and you find out that you're somebody who can work out in a relatively low blood sugar state, it's probably because your insulin is lower at that subjective moment in time. And from there, you can churn out more body fat because when your insulin is low, glucagon is going to mobilize fatty acids into your bloodstream and glucose, but essentially, when insulin is low, it has this reciprocal relationship with glucagon, where basically you have more fat being mobilized as fuel. Okay, and also insulin also turns off when it's spiked, it turns off some of the other enzymes that cause fat storage. Okay, so, or sorry, cause fat mobilization. So essentially you want <laughs> to work out in a low insulin state, relatively low insulin state, if you are cutting. So I'll explain more of this in a moment, but first I'm gonna, show, I'm gonna explain some of my other glucose readings. So this morning, well, this morning and afternoon, I took some glucose readings, and because I've been fasting for three days, almost, basically my glucose was lower than the average bear. <laughs> and because I do keto for a long time, and I've been doing it for like eight years, my blood sugar control is very well, very well maintained. Okay, this is why, even at the current moment, after I finished doing a little bit of exercise, hold on, let me try to blood glucose scan here. 4.3, okay, that's low for a lot of people, okay? So I woke up, and did most of my day working at 3.7 or so, as you can see from the picture. And for a lot of people, that's well, well below the range of a diabetics or somebody with blood sugar issues realm. Okay, so again, be careful. But here's the thing, if you're somebody who's just living your life and you haven't ate a meal in a while, that's a better time to do light exercise, to burn more fat. <laughs> so essentially, the point that I'm showing you my glucose reading for is not to just flex and prove the fact that I've been doing keto for a long time and have relatively good blood sugar control. But the thing is, <clears throat> once you find that spot, it's a matter of doing low intensity steady state cardio. So what I did this morning, especially because I'm fasting, is I did some rebounding on this trampoline that's in front of me. <laughs> because that's also beneficial for a lot of reasons, clearing out your lymphatic system while you're fasting. But again, I've been fasting, my blood sugar is going to be slightly lower than if I was fed. But at the same time, it doesn't look like I'm showing any signs of slowing down. <laughs> so simple activities, right? Low intensity steady state cardio. That's the thing. So I'm going to show you basically where I'm looking at right, where, what I'm looking like right now. But you have to remember, cutting is not my goal all the time. I do keto for lifestyle reasons and health reasons. And I change up the variation of keto all the time. Sometimes I'll do more vegetarian style keto. Sometimes I'll do more meat eating keto. Okay, there's lots of different ways you can do keto. But I'll show you what I'm looking like right now. But keep in mind, it's not like I'm doing keto all the time to cut. It's to maintain and slowly build muscle. 
But because I'm fasting a little bit right now, there is a little bit extra fat burn that's gonna come, especially when I can take advantage of these low glucose states, which are most likely caused by lower insulin throughout the entirety of the day. I'm currently 175 pounds, right? Six foot. Not my leanest I've ever been, but definitely not my fattest I've ever been. Okay, you can watch my other videos on that too. Um, but essentially, pretty lean, you know, a little flatter because I've been fasting, but still got the cuts in certain areas. And this has just been from a couple days of fasting with some light cardio, just having fun in life. Okay, and this is essentially, you know, just a little bit of a physique update, but at the same time, kind of showing that if you've seen my other videos recently, maybe I'm slightly leaner. I don't know who really keeps track of that. But essentially, <laughs> this is the point here. Alrighty, so I'm gonna speak a little bit more about the mechanisms at play here. But essentially, just wanted to show, you know, practice what I preach type thing in the beginning. Now, with the mechanisms at play, as I said before, glucagon is going to be mobilizing fat as well as glucose because your body's always trying to maintain steady glucose throughout the day. And your body can make more than enough carbs than it needs every single day if you eat a ketogenic diet. It's simply that, or fasting oriented lifestyle. It's simply that your body needs to get adapted first. So that's why it sucks at first. And that's why nobody does it because they think it is bad, <laughs> but it's really only if you're coming from a carb metabolism entirely and then try to switch over that you're going to have problems. Now with the other mechanisms at hand, we have essentially, if you think of bodybuilders who are using performance enhancing drugs and steroids, a lot of them will use insulin as a weapon. Okay. They'll use it basically to build muscle strategically and burn more fat. And the way they do this is by timing insulin. For fat loss and muscle gain, insulin's timing is key. And this is why people tell you to eat after a workout. This is why people tell you to do fasted cardio. But the first recommendation was far more common. So when you have a huge insulin spike, your body's going to escort nutrients, amino acids, and glucose into your muscles or other tissues in your body. And Essentially, if you've seen my car backloading video, you I've laid out an entire way that you can actually implement this into your life by kind of getting the best of both worlds of keto and carb consumption. However, it does take some keto dieting beforehand to prime your body to get much better at mobilizing fat <clears throat> and creating ketones. So when we're speaking of how to implement this, when we think of those bodybuilders who are using drugs, what they will do is they will slam a bunch of insulin around workout time and essentially, if they're doing fasted cardio or something, they'll avoid the insulin. A lot of them will do this. <clears throat> and the reason why is because it's insulin we're looking at here. It's not sugar. Sugar is just a method of measuring or getting a general idea of where your insulin may be, depending on your own subjective insulin sensitivity. So example, if you're somebody who is diabetic and you have low sugar, then that's a problem. <laughs> it's an example, if you're somebody who is non-diabetic or you're an athletic individual and your blood sugar is lower, chances are you have a better ability to control and maintain a low blood sugar state. However, the best of the best athletes have a very good ability to do this. So that's another reason why I believe metabolic conditioning is a huge factor that's going to change sports in the next decade. Um, but the best athletes already have that control, maybe just from genetics, from heavy training, whatever it may be. Okay, you can even watch my video on Ronaldo. There's a couple things like that, that kind of tie into his diet plan, at least the one that seems to be the most accurate. Now, <laughs> back to carb backloading. Essentially, you don't even need carbs to build muscle necessarily. All you really need is protein <clears throat> and amino acid availability. Of course, insulin enhances this. And if you're talking like, you know, competitive level bodybuilding, that's obviously where people add in the supplemental or I guess medical insulin injections so they can kind of augment this. That's not what I'm, you know, trying to preach to. Uh, because the people I'm trying to preach to are people who are trying to stay healthy and do sustainable practices that aren't dangerous and also get the best of these pr practices. <clears throat> so if your, if your blood sugar is low, it's generally an indication that your insulin is low as well because they tend to be in tandem. However, that doesn't always apply. If you just ate a meal and your blood sugar is lower, it's probably because your insulin raised and that lowered your sugar. Okay, so you have there's a couple nuances to this that you have to like be, be understanding of what just happened in your life in that moment to kind of understand this. But for a lot of people, the easiest way to say this is do fasted cardio for extra fat burn. You don't need to go too intense with the cardio because that's gonna be more of a glycolytic activity and make your body be more uh, anticipate, more likely to use glucose, okay? Because high intensity activity requires quick burning fuel. In fact, can still get you very far, body fat. However, it's just that your body is going to try to make it easier on itself and use some of that glucose you have stored. So when you're doing low and moderate intensity activity, this is why you are going to get more fat burn, 
especially when combined in a fasted state or a lower blood sugar state. <clears throat> now, here's the really cool part of the video because the, the beginning explained the mechanisms and now I'm getting into other ways you can kind of augment your sugar, assuming you're a healthy individual and you know, you have a general idea of how insulin and blood sugar work. So other supplements like apple cider vinegar, okay, well really it's a, it's not really a supplement, it's a food product, but other supplements that can lower your blood sugar in the moment, right, without causing hypoglycemic issues. <clears throat> so chromium, a mineral, vitamin C, very effective at lowering blood sugar more than it, less than it has to be. And apple cider vinegar, these are very useful supplements that you can use to basically cause your body to have a better response to sugar. So essentially your blood sugar isn't going to raise higher than it has to. And this is where the video gets very interesting because I've even the other day, oh, where the hell did I leave this thing? I've even the other day started measuring my body's reactions to apple cider vinegar and my blood sugar drops a couple points almost immediately. And I'm somebody who has very good glycemic control, especially while I'm fasting too, because then that way there's kind of, it's more of a control, you know, for my own case study here. <laughs> it's more of a controlled background for me to kind of compare things to. So my blood sugar will drop even with, in anticipation of a glucose meal and in, in anticipation of a keto meal or just purely fasted like I am right now. So essentially what you want to do with these supplements is if you use them in careful amounts, you know, you don't have the apple cider vinegar in a big drink because it'll mess up your teeth. Try not to have it with the straw chew. You got to just pound it back and maybe squirt a little bit of flavoring in there to make it more palatable or add a little bit of baking soda to neutralize the acid. But don't do that before a meal because the baking soda will mess with your stomach acid. So if you have something like that before activity, especially for somebody who is in a fasted state and you're controlled and you have no risks of bonking from blood sugar, then what you can do is you can have that apple cider vinegar or that vitamin C or that chromium, right? And essentially, especially if you have a blood sugar tracker, you can figure out how much your sugar actually drops by. So then example, when you're doing some activity in a lower blood sugar state, then you're going to be able to burn more fat because the reason your sugar is lower is not because insulin crammed it down. It's not because of that. It's because your body's just simply in a fasted state in, and performing optimally in a lower blood sugar range. So again, this is key. And I'm, I'm kind of tempted now to just start checking my blood sugar and flexing it uh, during these videos because people probably don't believe that keto and this lifestyle can provide mental benefits, but it does. <laughs> and this is actually the main reason I do it is because I want to be productive and keto dramatically increases my productivity. So that is the thing. You don't have to do keto all the time. You don't have to do fasting all the time, but everybody can benefit by incorporating these practices at least periodically throughout the year. Okay. There's some optimal balance. And that is my goal with this page is I want people to know on a mainstream level that you can use these tactics for better health and of course, better physique and a lot of other reasons um, from other clients I work with, but like brain function, insulin resistance, <clears throat> all a lot of, you know, other functions like that. So that is the purpose of this video. And I recommend, you know, trying to incorporate this, even if you're not in a keto state or a fully fasted state, simply start incorporating more fasted cardio, right? Especially when it's, if you're somebody who's coming from a carb diet or somebody who is not really in the best health, the safest way to do these things is, Hey, before breakfast, do a little bit of light activity. Okay. Of course your sugar is probably gonna be a little bit higher in the morning because the cortisol spike from waking up. However, you're still going to be in a lower state than you would be hours later after meals. So again, that's another reason why over time you're going to, you're going to slowly get better glucose control. So that is the ultimate goal of this video. Start incorporating some practices like that in a safe manner, fast cardio, light steady state, you know, things of that nature. And if you are somebody who fasts or does keto, then I've already laid out the framework here. And also if you're somebody who's looking to get the best of both worlds, watch my carb backloading video, because that will tell you some other strategic you know, methods to essentially incorporate the muscle building side of insulin after you're coming from a low insulin state, because in fact, the anabolic response can actually be higher if you come from low insulin to high insulin, because our bodies are survival machines. And if we weren't able to adapt to stress like that and basically have a higher efficiency of muscle building after coming from a low insulin state, then we wouldn't be here. So watch that carb back when the video it explains everything a lot better than I just did. And it doesn't exclude the possibility of getting that insulin effect from a keto diet if that's something you're interested in as well. So that's enough for this video. Subscribe to me right now. Like the video right now. Follow my Instagram as well. And besides that, leave me some of the comments. I'll do my best to get back to you and help you out. Thank you for watching. Anthony Romano, peace.